I unabashedly admit that I have too many favorite parts in the Holy Bible. So, so try not to chuckle as I present to you one of my favorite parts of the Holy Bible. John chapter 6, the bread of life discourse. Jesus drops the bombshell. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. Ka-boom. You know that manna that miraculously fell from heaven at the hands of Moses? That was part of the old game plan. This flesh thing is the game changer. I love John chapter 6 for a whole slew of different reasons. Partly because Jesus was trampling roughshod on the Mosaic law that forbade the consumption of blood. Partly because the look on the faces of his apostles must have been classic. But mostly because Jesus explicitly conveys the bare bones fact that the church he is establishing is not a democracy. Did you get that? The Holy Apostolic Roman Catholic Church is not a democracy. I love that after stating the reality of the real presence and what would become the Blessed Sacrament, Jesus doesn't chase down those abandoning ship pleading, hey guys, guys, come back. I, I didn't mean eat me, drink me, literally. I mean, come on, it's, it's just a figure of speech. Jesus doesn't then start to manipulate the message to his 12. Guys, 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 just hold on. Bear with me for a second. You, you don't get it yet, but you will. Just trust me. Just go along so that we can get along. No. As Jesus pans across to watch the literal masses depart from him and his message, he turns, looks at his closest pals, and says, Would you like to leave too? <laughs> Incredible. It's also incredible is the fact that many, some biblical scholars say thousands, did leave at that very moment. And they, the once faithful, continue to do so. My response? Don't let the door hit you on the way out. The Catholic Church is not a democracy. Never has been, never will be. And it's why the Roman Catholic Church can never be part of the WCC. Huh? What? WCC? What the heck's that? It's the World Council of Churches, don't you know? And just the other night, I was invited to an evening of reflection and dialogue with the Norwegian General Secretary of the organization. The event was called The Unity We Seek, exploring the hopes and challenges for ecumenism today. You know, it's confounding to me that the descendants of the very people who took a sledgehammer to the church some 500 years ago are now hand-wringing and lamenting about the fractious nature of Christianity. At least that's what they say. And you know what? They're right. Some 33,000 different Protestant sects is, is pretty fractious. Still, I was curious as to how the dialogue would pan out. Didn't take long for someone to take a swipe at the magisterium, though. And the dig came courtesy of a reverend of the United Church of Canada. How did she begin her talk on exploring the hopes for ecumenism? By recounting how devastated her niece was, crying in a corner while all the rest of the Catholics were joyously receiving the Eucharist at a large community mass in Vancouver. Those nasty Catholics hell-bent on keeping everybody not in their club away from the banquet table. Once again, it dawned on me. How the heck is this ecumenism possible? When these so-called church leaders of the Protestant variety haven't the foggiest clue as to how we Catholics view the Eucharist. Actually, you know what? Strike that. How the Eucharist was always intended to be viewed. And you know, I can't tell you how many times I heard the word Eucharist brought up that evening. Today's attack on the Christian faith is in high gear. But to faithful Catholics, this WCC dialogue and reflection is kind of akin to shuffling the deck chairs on the Titanic. And this is not to necessarily throw ecumenism under the bus either. After all, there is space devoted to it within the catechism. What I'm saying here is that for Catholics, there are things that are simply not up for debate. Things you, you cannot put up to a vote. Things that are completely non-negotiable. Like, uh, I don't know... Uh, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's our duty. It's our duty to know these things, to know our faith. The day after my evening with the WCC, it was announced that after 10 years on the job of leading the Anglican Church, 
the Archbishop of Canterbury is stepping down at the end of the year. The pessimist may argue that uh, Rowan Williams is uh, getting out while the getting's good. Then again, the self-described hairy lefty always had a tough time reconciling the rift concerning homosexual clergy between conservative African and liberal North American churches. As Williams himself put it concerning crisis management, quote, the worst aspects of the job have been the sense that there are some conflicts that won't go away. Yes, Rowan, democracy's a bitch.